Good afternoon. Um, today we're going to be looking at a walkthrough for this demo where uh, we make falling platforms. So here we can see we have a level, when you step on a platform, they start to collapse. Those collapse quite slowly and those collapse quite quickly. Uh, I'll start off by apologizing for the sound quality. Um, I'm not recording where I used to and I don't have the microphone I normally do, uh, so please bear with me on that. Um, as always, you'll find the link to the uh, scenes down below uh, in the description. And as always, this comes from uh, suggestions that people give in the comments. Uh, so please, I absolutely uh, love seeing feedback and love hearing your thoughts about what you'd like to see. So if you have that, send it my way. On to the good stuff. You'll see um, in the scenes there are two, one called with behavior and one called with events only. Um, and if I show you, that was with behavior, with behavior has the pink background, event only has the blue background. Um, you'll see that events only behaves in an identical kind of fashion. Blocks, they can jump on in that, um, that break after a time. Why have I got two of them? Well, this is what I thought was an interesting example of, as I went through, I realized that something was wrong and uh, you hear uh, it a lot, it's called code smell. Um, code smell is that something just doesn't look like it's done right. And this is code smell. This is, for me was a code smell. Uh, so you'll see in, inside of the, um, inside of the uh, events tab that there's four different sections, development, utilities, Keep playing camera, player animations. There's nothing magical going on in there. Um, nothing really to explain. Um, the real interesting part handles under handle platform breaking, and this is what the events only look like. Um, I'm not going to go into detail on this because, as I said, I'm leaving this in here as an example of when I when I made this and when I saw it, I thought it could probably be done better, um, but it works nonetheless. And the way it works is that when you collide with the floor. You start tweening a number. Tweening means you um, move from one value to another value over time. So we're moving some kind of uh, variable is breaking from 0 to 100. Linear means you just do it at a constant rate over half a second. And then depending on what that number is, if it's 30, you, change, you start changing the animation so it breaks. Um, so you'll see here like um, the animation starts clean and then slowly there are cracks on it. I mean, that's how we do it here. Um, but this is so this is with events only um, this is what it looks like it's quite messy it's quite bloated it doesn't really fit on one screen um, the fact it's duplicated is something i can't really help even with even done in the other way that i'm going to show you you still have to duplicate it but there's less duplication that can be done um, and also becomes complicated what if you add, wanted to add another breaking frame in the middle of this or what if you want to do something else um, it gets quite hard to manage and let's contrast this with the with behavior where if i open up the handle platform breaking, this is what it looks like. It looks far smaller, because it is, it also looks far tidier, because instead of trying to read down this and understand what the logic's going on, it's actually explained out. And we use uh, gdevelop behaviors for that, and it was a really interesting, uh, little, this was a really interesting little project in order to learn what that, um, how to use them. Um, and so let's talk through this. Let's talk through just these events right now. Um, is there anything on these I want to talk about? No, not really. Um, what you'll see here, though. So let's start. Let's start with just the animations. Firstly, you'll see that uh, this slow breaking floor has five stages of animation: slightly cracked, more, 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 done. Whereas the fast breaking floor only has three because it happens quite quickly. You don't need as many. Um, I'm going to remove these just to keep it simple. So the way, I've, the way I've done this is I've created a new behavior. Um, so destroy outside is a classic one, is a normal one, platform is a normal one, breakable platform is one of my own, is the one I made for this. And it has two properties. How long should the platform break for in milliseconds? And how many times should the degrade condition fire before it breaks? Uh, degrade condition means it's got worse, display a different animation. Uh, And so this is how it works. If the platform isn't breaking, we just want the animation to stay on the first one and we don't want it to destroy outside of the screen. As soon as we come into contact with, an, uh, um, with a floor that's not, with a platform that's not breaking, 
we want to trigger it to break. This is one of the custom triggers I built. Mm. And I'll walk through the behavior because custom triggers, um, custom events, custom expressions, I use these all I use these all in a really good project to um, learn how to use them. So if we come into contact it, signal that it's breaking. Whilst it is breaking, we want to change the frame of the animation. So remember that it's each frame is it gets worse, the platform gets closer and closer to breaking, and we're gonna send it to this degraded step. Um, and this will be a number between zero and whatever maximum that you set it is. And once it has broken, this yet again is another condition, a uh, custom condition. So we've gone from breaking when it's broken, and if the platform is still activated, uh, deactivate it and uh, drop it. Let's take a peek into um, this behavior, this break all platform. So behaviors are how GDevelop encourages reusability and encapsulation. Big words, what do they really mean? Well, let's just do it by example. Um, the short answer is that it means that what you use in your events tab is neater and is shorter and is also reusable. So without needing to duplicate any logic in here, by simply attaching the same behavior the same breakable platform to the slow behavior, where I say you know, I want to do for one and a half seconds and five steps, and then the fast behavior, where I say I want to do 303 steps, without needing to do anything else, I've re I've managed to reuse um, my same the same events code uh, without needing to do any any extra work. Um, behaviors have properties, so configuration is just sort of what they are attached to. Um, some of the, these some of these are visible, some of these aren't. So for example, breaking duration, you set that in the editor, and you also set how many degrading levels there are. But then you have two hidden properties, whether is the platform breaking, and uh, how much has the platform broken. Um, do pre-step events is a, a lifecycle method for a behavior. So, uh, in a behavior, when you click add a new method, you can see there's main lifecycle events, when it's created, when it's destroyed, and do pre-events, do step pre-events is um, run just before the main event cycle, the main events page, uh, every single frame. So it's, a, it's an update loop that just keeps going, there's some other ones here, and then there's some custom ones. Um, so this, so do step pre-events is run every single frame. The rest of these are actions, expressions, conditions, and the like. Let's dig into it. So this is run every frame. And what it says is, if is breaking is true, and remember that is breaking starts as false, so the platform is not broken, what we do is, as long as our internal value of, the, of how broken, what's called, of how broken the platform is, called breaking value, is less than how long it sh the platform should break for, what we want to do is add numbers. And we are doing a thousand times time, time delta, uh, and we're adding that to um, the value of how broken the platform is. And the reason we're doing a thousand times time delta is we're dealing with milliseconds. There are a thousand milliseconds in a second, and time delta gets a difference um, in seconds between one frame and the next. And what times the two together means is each frame update in milliseconds how long we've been breaking for. What that means is um, every second we will add a thousand. And this kind of this makes the math kind of work out quite neatly. So if I say I want it to last one second, so I want it to last a thousand milliseconds, well, after a thousand, after one second, this number um, breaking value will be a thousand. Two seconds will be two thousand. Three that two and a half seconds will be two thousand five hundred. And so, this is the main event loop. If the object is breaking, just add numbers. Just keep adding numbers until breaking value is breaking duration. Trigger platform break is an action. So, um, remember that actions are on the right, conditions are on the left. 
So with trig play, training uh, trigger platform break, what you get to say is, um, we just set the is breaking boolean, which remember we set as false. Initially, we set it to true. Um, and we also get to specify out how it appears in the event sheet. So we get to say trigger and param zero inside of parameters. Zero is always the object it's dealing with. The object you want to put in, attach to it, trigger param zero to break, which in our behaviors thing comes out trigger slow breaking floor to break. Is breaking does, I'm going to deal with is breaking first just because it's less confusing. It's just a condition that asks, is it breaking? And you return true if the internal property is breaking is true. And so that's how we can deal with this, if the platform is not breaking and if the platform is breaking. Platform broken, well, if our breaking value is the same as or greater than breaking duration, then yeah, it's broken. That we know we have hit, we know the platform has broken for the set amount of time, um, for the time, amount of time speci specified. The last one is platform degraded step, um, which says what step of how how broken should our thing appear, and this is customizable by the developer. So, for example, if I take the slow breaking, you see there is one, two, three, four, five steps. And if I collide with uh, this, you can see one, two, three, four, five, gone. I can, I can make it look slightly wrong by customizing it. Let's say I say there's only four steps. Well, this is, uh, what this code will do is it'll automatically spread out those four steps evenly. So if I run into it now, one, two, three, four, gone. Also, like the reason why it goes four and gone at the same time is because uh, it assumes the last one is the breaking one. Equally so, I can even put the number higher. I can say there's 10 steps. It won't actually apply the animation, but what it will do is it'll run through the first five steps really quickly. So one, two, three, four, five, and then it waits the rest of the time because there's no, we don't have animations for it. So that's what breaking step is. That's what degraded step is. Because I knew I wanted this functionality. I knew I wanted to be able to show the platform breaking, but I also knew I wanted to um, be able to customize how many things are shown. So let's dig into the math of this. Uh, let me copy this out. Let me copy this out into a Word doc, just to make it clearer what's going on here. Yes, we can do that. Okay, so that goes to that. That is divided by that, and then floor that. Okay, so this first one here, degrading levels. Yeah, the um, G developed help put that in. This basically just takes the value of the property. So you'll see if we go here and under expressions. Um, we can literally go to breaking platform and we can we can take any of our properties. So if I take how broken is the platform, you select the object, it throws that in. So these are just values of properties. This is how many levels are we going to break? And this is how long uh, is the breaking going to last for? Uh, how long is the platform going to break? So let's say, um, let's take our example of our fast platform. We have it's going to break in 300 milliseconds, and we have three breaking levels. So this number is 3, and this number is 300. So what we're saying is, how many, what we're working out is, how frequently should the platform breaking update? So 300 divided by 3, it, well, that means every 100 milliseconds, we should update it. Platform breaking value is where we currently are. So that's a number anywhere between 0 and 300. And we're dividing it by this number. So we've got, let's say we're at 100 million, let's say we're at uh, 100 milliseconds. We're going 100 milliseconds divided by this. Well, that gives you um, 100 divided by 100 is 1. 
that gives you the frame that we're looking for. So we can literally say, if say, if say we're at 200 milliseconds, what frame should we be at? Well, 200 milliseconds gives us frame two. And if we've completed it and the platform's fully broken, that gives us frame three. So the purpose of these two lines is to work out what frame we should be showing. The purpose of floor is to remove decimals. So say we're not at 100, say we're at 50. We're at frame 50. Well, 50 divided by um, what's 300 over 3, which is basically 100, so is equal to 0.5. If we just tried to put this in now, well, frame 0.5 doesn't exist. You know, frames can only be zero, you know, integers between 0 and whatever. What floor does is it rounds down. So when, if we do floor this value, what it does, it gives us frame 0. If you've got frame 130, or well, divided by 100, um, that gives us 1.3. We don't really want 1.3 though. If we floor this, We floor this, this gives us frame one. And so what floor? So if if this value gets us the frame we're interested in, but it can be it can have decimal points, what floor does is say, no, just get us um, just round it down until we've hit the next level up. So this is how we achieve um, so that's how we get uh, the frame that we're interested in. This, so this code will always output an integer value that starts at zero and goes up to our maximum number based on how many breaking and based on how many breaking points we want. And that's why we plug it straight into here. We plug because this puts out an integer. We can say modify the current frame of this object to whatever frame we want this to be, because we know that this will be zero up to the number we give. Cool. Have I missed anything? I am sure I will remember something afterwards that I have not said. Is breaking platform broken? You free of them? Sure, let's go with this. So thank you very much and thank you for bearing with me. Um, and as I try to suddenly work out how I'm going to explain these things on the spot. Please like and you know give me and share support because I really appreciate it. Um, I, it you know helps me motivate helps motivate me to do the next one. And as always, well, speak in the next one. I'll see you there. Tara.